Hi, I'm Julie Thompson. Welcome to the Duxbury School Committee Candidate Interviews. I want to take a moment to thank the candidates for participating in this interview and collaborating with PAC-TV to bring this informational programming to residents and voters this election season. Let me explain the format. We will be conducting a one-on-one -on -one interview style Q&A format with each candidate, lasting about 30 minutes. Responses will not be timed and follow-up questions may be asked during this format. We aim to ask up to four or five questions, but that will depend on the length of the responses along with any follow-up discussion during this exchange. Candidates will be allowed to address anything not covered or that they'd like to add clarification to at the end of the interview in their closing remarks. Let's get started. Today we're speaking with Laurel Deacon, one of the three candidates for school committee in the Duxbury Town election. Laurel, thank you for joining us today. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. So we're going to go right through the questions. We'll start with question number one. We have 30 minutes. Okay. One of the many responsibilities of the school committee members is to advocate on behalf of the students and their schools and promote the benefits of the school system to the community. What impression do you want to give of the Duxbury School System and how would your advocacy showcase all that the district has to offer? That's a great question. Um, so I think in our district, I, we are coming up on the opportunity for a brand new strategic plan. And there is a lot of opportunity there for us as a community and a district and for the school committee to actively participate in identifying um, what, what we want our goals and objectives to be for the district. And I think in my experience in watching this process over the 10 years that I've lived in town, um, the joke is always that everyone always asks for more money, right? Mm -hmm. And it's the job of the school committee to, to advocate for the resources. And my hope is that the school committee can really become incredibly well educated about the budget process. Mm -hmm. um, and again, to have a strategic plan that identifies clearly with input from all stakeholders in the community because you have to have that buy-in mm -hmm. from all members of the community. That's who's voting at town meeting mm -hmm. and participating in those discussions to identify measurable goals and objectives. And I think that's the most difficult part. Um, and I personally don't necessarily have an expert idea about what those goals and objectives should be, mm -hmm. but I believe it's the role of the school committee to make sure that that conversation is happening and that the right people are at the table for those conversations. Mm -hmm. And once those goals and objectives are identified, again, to return to this idea of are they measurable mm -hmm. and can we tie the budget mm -hmm. to those goals and objectives right. so that when we come back next year mm -hmm. and have this same conversation about the budget again, mm -hmm. we can articulate a return on investment for the commitment that the town has made to that budget process. Okay. So I think those, we ha it's sort of a pivotal moment right now because I know we have that coming down the pike. Mm -hmm. um, the strategic the, plan. The strategic plan, yeah. exactly. Okay. And so that, again, that's the place where we need to articulate those goals. And I think coming out of a pandemic, again, that might look a little bit different than it has in the past. Yeah. Um, and we have an opportunity here to decide for the next three years, what do we need to focus on right. to get us back to square one? Exactly. Now, I'll, I'll follow up on this. When, when you think about the town of Duxbury, um, a lot of, we, we reached out to the community and said, what questions do you want to ask mm. you know, the, the members that are running for the um, school committee? And one of the big things was, Sports gets an awful lot of press, gets an awful lot of, um, um, in, in, when you're talking about Duxbury, a lot of times people say, well, they've got a really great sports mm -hmm. program. But Duxbury, and of course they do, right. and it involves a lot of kids, a lot of people are involved in it. But what other things are, are going on in Duxbury that Duxbury should be known for? What, what is the outfacing message you want to give about the school district in Duxbury? Right, I think that's a fantastic question. It's actually what I started thinking about when I went back to moving here and why I chose this, this, this district um, to raise my family. We moved when my daughter was only um, two and had plans to have more children. And obviously, as you would, if you asked most uh, of the community members with young children, why did you move here? Yeah. Well, for the schools. Yep. That's the answer. Um, and so I grew up in a really small public school district and it was fantastic. I had a great experience in public education, but there weren't a lot of opportunities outside of sports and academics. Yeah. And so when I looked at Duxbury, I saw lots about music and theater and now there's a robotics program mm -hmm. that has been developed. So there's so much to offer. And to your point, I think 
athletics often take precedent in the headlines. Um, it's easy to talk about. It's great to have photos of yeah. and all of those things. So I think that's a great opportunity is for the school committee to find ways to highlight the return on investment for things outside of those components. And I think, again, there's no shortage of them, but right. we need to highlight them more than we have. Exactly. Okay, question two. When it comes to decision making, it can be a process to balance opposing views when working towards a solution. As an advocate for families and educators, how do you manage the decision making process when there's no simple, straightforward path to resolution? It's a great question and one we struggle with every day in our lives, not only on school committee. Um, and I've watched that happen in the school committee meetings. So I think the most, the most that we heard about last year, me as a parent um, and in our community, in the climate in which we were operating, was transparency. Mm -hmm. It's a big word. It's a word people use a lot. Um, but to me, I think that means a transparent environment in which everyone has an opportunity to express their opinion. And I think sometimes the school committee is the place for that and sometimes it's not. But there are lots of opportunities in our district for that kind of discussion and conversation to happen. But I'm not sure that that has been maximized. And I think there's some opportunity there um, to do that and to get people talking. And I think there, as a result of this pandemic, there's there's been some sort of highlights of things that may have been bubbling under the surface, mm -hmm. but really were brought to the attention of the community, both parents and educators. And I know for the town of Duxbury, um, I think we have some rebuilding to do between mm -hmm. the parent community and educators. And there are, as I said, places for that to happen, right. but I think we really need to be intentional about amplifying those opportunities and making sure that people feel comfortable yeah. coming to the table and having those conversations. Okay. Um, and l let me follow up with that because this happens all the time. Uh, with the use of social media and it being so widespread, do you see it f affecting the decision-making process in, in the school committee? And should school committee members actually engage in online discussions um, or debates about anything going on in the school system? Online, on social media? Yeah. Uh, I do not believe that's a place for that um, because I don't think it's transparent and I think there's a lot to be left for interpretation and mm -hmm. that's a dangerous place. Mm -hmm. um, I think I think that was part of the, the issue in the pandemic is that everyone was at home yep. and living in a little bit of a silo mm -hmm. and we, we there's a word, this keyboard warrior, right? Oh, yeah. These people who sort of yep. get in their silos and they're happy to articulate things in social media, but if you ask them to stand up and have a conversation one-on-one -on -one mm -hmm. or talk to you about those issues, they don't feel comfortable doing that. So mm -hmm. what I would say is if you don't feel comfortable having the conversation in person, mm -hmm then we shouldn't be having the conversation in okay. other avenues. Okay. So what if someone what if uh, someone watches a school committee meeting mm -hmm. and the next day they go on social media and they they say something that is completely not true. Uh, let's say you took a vote and they completely messed it up when they when they talked about it on social media. Should you correct them? Because that happens a lot also. I would say that the, the, the place to correct them is not in a response on a social media platform. It is a statement from the school committee that clarifies whatever that issue is. Um, okay. And that has happened actually fairly recently and I think the school committee has been more active in their communication with the parents of the district or the community, whoever's on the listserv that, right. that right. solicits that information right. um, in doing so and I think that's the right place for it. And then if there is follow up for that, then it needs to go on an agenda and it, there needs to be an opportunity for conversation and for people to know that that's available to yeah. them okay. as opposed to being keyboard warriors. Yeah, okay, great. Uh, question three. <clears throat> School budgets can be can make up a significant percentage of the town budget, as we all know. Um, how do you get the best bang for the dollar when balancing the district contracts, the curriculum, the student needs, the facility upkeep, and the current technology while trying to keep the budget within a reasonable range? A reasonable range. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, that's a great question. I think I spoke to that a little bit. Um, in the first question, but as I said, I think I wor I've worked in the nonprofit sector. I've worked for the state, um, and I think one of the biggest things that I learned, um, mostly in my work with United Way and writing grants and things, is this idea of measurable goals and objectives. Mm -hmm. And if those are clear and you have those, and you can tie the numbers to that, mm -hmm. I think it's much easier to have that conversation. And I truly believe in my experience thus far in our town and in the district, I'm not sure that has been done 
effectively um, to be able to advocate for the resources in the way that the school committee is is supposed to be responsible for doing. So I have a lot to learn about yeah. the budget process yeah. for sure, um, and I have some great resources in town to do that. And I think I hope to embrace that as a member of the school committee mm -hmm. and have all members actively participate in that process so that we can figure out a direction. Because to your point, I think at the end of the day, there's only so many dollars to go around. Yeah. And when you're advocating for a higher dollar amount for the school budget, mm -hmm. it means you have to have a really difficult conversation about where that money's gonna come from right. and what are you pulling it from and people have very strong feelings about yeah, whatever do. their, you know, is important to them right. within the town right. budget and it's, there's a lot of things right. in Duxbury. How do you circle a square of people that um, don't have kids in the system? Which always happens, you know, people age out of the system or their kids have gone through it and then they're gone and they, um, they become a little bit more not thrilled with the fact that so many dollars go into the school Fiscally system. conservative. Yeah, well, yeah, yes. and, and uh, it's understandable. I mean, Absolutely. It really is. How, do you, how, do you, how will you deal with that type of issue? Yeah, and I, think, and I think that's one in Duxbury that comes to the table every single town, yeah. town meeting sure. that we have. Um, and the conversation is always, you know, the, the people who have a vested interest in the district who have kids in the district, it's difficult to take a whole day to go to the town meeting yep. and show up, right? Yep. And that's always a conversation, but you still, we still have to do that. And sure. We have to encourage people to do so. I think the bigger, that work has to happen long before town meeting, mm -hmm. and it has to happen over the course of the entire budget process, which is year, a mm -hmm. year long. Mm -hmm. um, and it, I think sometimes it only comes to light when we start talking about numbers and asking for money. Right. And I think that's the error that we're making as, as a district on some level mm -hmm. and the school committee has to play a role in that and they have to get buy-in and by I, I really believe by identifying these measurable goals and objectives mm -hmm. you can do that and you can articulate why you are asking for these dollars mm -hmm. that's a much easier conversation than just asking every year sure now what about the people that say um, what what significant improvements could you make or what could you do um, within the school system without using dollars a non-budgeted item. What? What? Let's talk about that. A non, there's, I, I think there's an opportunity for lots of those. And what I would say is, I think I'm not necessarily the expert on that, but I would love to hear the ideas of our educators. Yep. So when you talk about, you know, what is the most valuable resource that we have? And yes, they have a salary, and that's important. Mm -hmm. um, but when you think back to your own experience in an education system, to me, the most impactful part of my education was a teacher mm -hmm. or multiple teachers, yeah. right? Yep. And I think sometimes we forget that when we start looking at budget line items mm -hmm. and where everything goes. And so I think teachers are really struggling right now. Mm -hmm. um, and we heard it over the last two years a lot of, you know, kind of not feeling like their voices are heard or, um, and I think professional development is, is one of those things where I would love to have more in-depth conversations with our educators about what that means, mm -hmm. what is most beneficial to them. Mm -hmm. Because I think that's a big budget line item and we wanna make sure that that is actually being utilized in a way that is effective for those who are receiving that professional development. Right. Um, so I think that's, that's a, a place, but I think again, it's about having the right people at the table in the conversation mm -hmm. to discuss those things. And right. there's plenty of opportunities um, and they have ideas because I have started to have some of those conversations. Yeah. A lot of school districts do this too. They they kind of have think tanks where they bring people in and say, what can we do that costs us zero dollars? Right. That has an impact. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I and think there's no shortage, but it's the, the right people. Those ideas people. are very important. They yeah. are. And Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Question four. The school district has recently handled some personnel matters in a very public way. In situations like this, how does a school committee member balance the need for transparency and providing the information in a timely manner with the need to follow the process and the law. That is probably the most difficult job mm -hmm. and component of school committee um, and one that I think people aren't always aware of until they're sitting in that seat. Mm -hmm. um, and I've certainly watched it play out over the course of the last year um, and often thought about how difficult that situation is. Um, I think the transparency component is key. Um, and I think the most difficult part is obviously someone who comes into the school committee when something like this has already taken place and happened yep. and you're brought in at a time when perhaps there wasn't transparency prior mm -hmm. and now you're dealing with those consequences. So mm -hmm. my hope would be that coming into um, the school committee position 
it would it would be an opportunity to make sure that starting fresh now mm -hmm. the transparency is there and to your point i mean there are, and i think that's something that if nothing else, as a school committee member, you have to articulate to the community, there are certain things that we cannot share. This mm -hmm. is, cannot be public information as much as you want to know and understand. Yeah, um, that, was what, that was one of my follow-ups. Right, is, is but legally, we can't share this information, right. the specifics. Right. Here's what we can share, mm -hmm. and I'm happy to entertain questions, mm -hmm. but we will be very clear about what questions we can and cannot answer. But when we can't answer questions, we'll be forthcoming with that information, and right. I don't know um, if that's always the case, and I think, one of the issues is a fear, a fear of saying something that you shouldn't or doing something that you shouldn't. So how, how, how do you as a school committee member deal with that? Whether it's a student that sees something and it doesn't feel comfortable or it's a teacher or it's a parent, is it your job as, as the school committee to set the standards for how do you communicate things that are uncomfortable or that you, you want things followed up on? I think the school committee has to have a conversation with the administration. That's the avenue, that's my understanding of the avenue for those conversations. That's mm -hmm. where you begin. Mm -hmm. Now, if the school committee determines that that was not an effective method or they're not receiving the information um, in a timely manner mm -hmm. or in, in a transparent manner, mm -hmm. um, then that requires follow-up. But I, And I think, again, part of it is having that conversation with the community that here's what we're doing, here's right. what we are working on. Right. We are working on this. It's a process. It's not something we're going to be able to deliver back to you, you know, on yeah. tomorrow. Um, but know that we are thinking about it and working on it. Right. And you know, as soon as we have more information for you, we'll give it out. We'll give it out. And how do you set set up the scenario so the same things don't happen again? What do you do to prevent yeah. situations like mm -hmm. that? Mm -hmm. um, have really transparent conversations about them from mm -hmm. the very beginning. Yeah. And, and I think it's the school committee's role to be very clear about what transparent means mm -hmm. within the rules of the law yep. um, and make sure that there's a partnership between the administration and the school committee. And I think that's something that I feel really strongly about. And I think it's a difficult dynamic because you as the school committee are holding the administration accountable, yep. but how do you do that? unless you have a strong relationship and a partnership with them. And right. so my hope would be that if that partnership exists and that trust is there, mm -hmm. then you're going to be able to move forward together. Right. While also, as a school committee, representing the interests of the community. Right. That's, that's your role. Right. And what about the final thing on this, this question is interaction with parents. Now, school committees, I know some people go to meetings, some people don't. <laughs> some people write to you and say, please answer this question. Um, there's always a number of parents that are very vocal. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of parents that never you never hear from. Mm -hmm. What is your what is your view on parental involvement with all things to do with the school? Because it's a it's a it's it's a tough it's a tough balancing act. It is because sometimes the teachers are acting as parents. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you have to be the arbitrator between. You, you almost are, school committee can act as parents. Mm -hmm. How do you how do you respect the position of parents, but also draw the line? That's a wonderful and difficult question. Um, what I would say is, in in my understanding, and as I'm still learning about the district and the mechanisms in place, there are places for that. And I think the school committee over the course of the last year or two has alluded to them a little bit, but mm -hmm. I think it's time to really highlight what's in place for those opportunities. Because you're, to your point, I don't know that school committee is always the place for people mm -hmm. to stand up and, and make a statement about something mm -hmm. if it's not something that's related you know, to the, to the agenda that day. Mm -hmm. um, but that doesn't mean that it's not important and it doesn't need to be heard. Mm -hmm. um, and so there's, there's a system of school councils that were set up um, and we have them. And there's a school council at each school and that's a partnership of parents, mm -hmm. educators, administrators, and a community member in, in each school. Mm -hmm. And that's by law, they mm -hmm. have to be there. Mm -hmm. Now whether or not those are being utilized and, and that resource is being maximized, mm -hmm. I think is a question that I have for our district. And it's something that I am hopeful will create a space because I think that is the place for that. That is the purpose and the intention of those those things. And their role is then to obviously report to the school committee and yep. bring up issues that arise. Right. And it's a much more, I think it's more accessible for, yeah. for parents in the community because it's school specific. Yep. Um, and then those issues will rise to the school committee as needed. Makes sense. Okay. Bonus question here. Hmm. Um, 
What you decide during your time on the school committee will affect the students of tomorrow. How far into the future do you look to see the impact you could make as a school committee member right now? How far into the future? I think that's a more complicated question in this moment mm -hmm. because of what we've just gone through. Um, I think in my mind right now, I think about focusing on the next three to five years. Mm -hmm. um, the term is three years, but I think when you think about a strategic plan and where we're going and what we have to address mm -hmm. based on what's happened in the last two years, um, to me that's a manageable view for right now. Mm -hmm. um, and once you set set the bar for those three years, then we have a look back moment of where are we now? Because again, I think it's sort of a pivotal moment. The last two years have been unlike anything mm -hmm. we have ever experienced. Absolutely. And so the conversations and the strategic plan and all of those things are going to be a little bit different, I think, this time around, or I believe that they should be. Right. Um, and then you revisit that and, and plan for the next 10. Okay. Based on the, Based the on previous the, three. Based on the previous three. Let, let me put this one to you. Um, over the past decade or so, the focus for post-secondary education has, has shifted from the traditional, you're going to apply to college. You're right. going to go to college. We're going to get you ready for college to options that include the trades and even certificate programs. So knowing that that landscape of after high school has changed mm -hmm. dramatically, especially in the job market and especially since COVID right. has happened, how should that be affecting your decisions on curriculum, on, on where the district should be bringing these students to look five and 10, 15 years into their future? That's a great question. Um, I think the landscape is changing, and I think the community is aware of that. And I think the unique opportunity we have in Duxbury is it is a small community, mm -hmm. and it's a place where you truly could engage a broad range of members of the community to talk about that. Mm -hmm. um, but I think at the end of the day, it's really the students that we should be speaking to about this mm -hmm. and what their ideas about goals and objectives for their own educational experience are. Mm -hmm. And that's, and I'm talking, you know, starting in middle school, you begin to have those conversations and the guidance counselors are having those conversations, mm -hmm. but I'm not sure that those conversations are making it to the ears of those who are making the decisions right. about policies and what, what are measurable goals and objectives are. Right. So I think, again, it's about having conversations and discussions and having all of the stakeholders involved in those. And I think students are sometimes left out of these conversations mm. when actually they're the most important because they're those, those are the people that we're working for. It's their they, future. It's their future, right? right? right. So let's ask them. Let's yeah. ask them about their future and what their ideas are for what that looks like and what they want to achieve. Right. And I think we have this vision of, you know, achieving um, academic excellence, yeah. um, personal and academic excellence is our mission at DPS. And that's a great statement, but what does that mean? Mm. What does that mean to each respective group? And I think we need to ask that question right. to determine our strategic plan and what that looks like. Right. And students, I am hopeful that we can engage students in that conversation. Yeah. I mean, you alluded to um, the robotics club, um, things like yeah. that, that, you know, 10, 15 years ago, there was no robotics club. Coding. I mean, it's just, and you don't have to go to college anymore. To to, to, to some of these things. careers that people are walking into, they don't require a four-year degree. Not that there's anything wrong with it. Four-year right. degrees are wonderful, but they're not always necessary. But do you think that overall curriculum has lagged behind what is actually the reality of what's out there? I think the I think the perception of what education is supposed to be. Yep. has lagged behind. And I okay. think Duxbury is is no different. I yep. think that's happened everywhere. Yep. It's moving at, at lightning speed yeah. and we haven't really caught up yet. Yep. And so again, I keep using this, there's like a pivotal moment here and it's exciting and, and a little scary, I think, for everybody to have that in front of them and yeah. have to have those conversations. But um, it's time, right. it's time for that. And I think, and again, but you have to gain buy-in from everybody yep. because to your point there's a broad range in our community of people who might not understand the right. value of the robotics club right, right, right. now right so let's talk about that and to your point it's all come back to the budget and how, how right. you're going to budget this and your your measurable goals and objectives so let's look at robotics five years from now right what do they do over the last five years absolutely yeah. and why what is the yeah. return on investment exactly. for that and yeah. i don't think it's hard to make that case right but you have to make that case that's right right okay we have about five minutes 
So why don't you um, let us know anything that we didn't bring up that you wanted to talk about before we do your closing statement? Or do you want to clarify or go back to any of the questions? Um, I think they were great questions. Thank you for, mm -hmm. thank you for asking. Sure. Um, I don't think there's anything that we didn't talk about. I think, um, you know, in our community, obviously, I've put out uh, a lot of information about yep. what I think is important and, and why I'm running. Yep. Um, and I hope those are accessible. Uh, and they will be. They'll be in the Clipper. They'll, they'll be all over town for the next three weeks. Yep. And um, I would hope that people would reach out. I think that's the most important thing to me is to hear from the community. Um, it's really what I feel most strongly about mm -hmm. in terms of my role on the school committee mm -hmm. and serving as a bridge between the community and our district. So I think driving home that point and making sure that people understand that that's where I'm coming from when okay. I talk about running for school committee. All right. Do you want to just... Um talk into the camera for a second and just give a little bit of your bio as to what brought you here and why you are running? Sure. Um, I am a re I have been a resident of Duxbury uh, for almost 12 years now and I think truthfully that is what is the most valuable experience in terms of what I can bring to the table um, in my my campaign for school committee. I am also a mother of three. Mm -hmm. Can't leave that out. I think it's also incredibly important. I have a 12, 9, and six-year-old in Duxbury Public Schools. Um, I also was a coach in the high school. Um, but again, to come back to this idea of being an active member of the community, and I have been, um, I have been involved in lots of organizations, not only the schools, but the Duxbury Music Festival, um, and the Duxbury Education Foundation, mm -hmm. and volunteering for the PTA, and all of those things have really provided me with the experience that I think is most valuable to bring to the school committee. And so that is why I'm running. It's It's been pretty clear in all of my statements okay. about that's how I look at um, the value of my role as a candidate. Okay. Thank you, Laurel. For our viewers, thank you for joining us. If you're interested in watching replays of this interview, please visit our website, pactv.org slash elections, for replay times and online viewing options, including PACTV's on-demand and streaming service, PACTV Prime. And please make your choices heard by voting in the election on Saturday, March 26th. Thank you and good day.